Tragedy occurs. Today's lesson tells us to continue talking with God. He wants to dialogue with us about everything, not just some things, things we want, everything, even about our doubts and fears. See how some things look. See, that's what I learned about. It's okay to have that. But you need to discuss it. You know what I mean? Don't just stay on that. You tend to stay on that. But see, the Lord is saying, I'm going to put you in some situations that you're going to have to adapt. Because I'm testing you. I'm test, but I'm getting you ready. I'm refining you. You know, gold, you know, gold ain't always shiny and pretty. Gold's dirty. Come out the ground. But then they refine it all off, burn all the junk off. That's what we have to do. That's what we have to do is burn. And that's what the Lord is doing with us, burn all the junk off. That's why we don't need to try to keep baggage. We want to take stuff. No, leave it go. Let it go. It might have been good for, for a period of time. Let it go. Let it go. So we're going to get into the lesson here. It's Brother John, right? To come up and be read the lesson for us. John's always the, he's the ram in the bush. <laughs> the God makes sure, hey, he always got another one. <laughs> Good morning, Sunday School. I will be reading out of the NLT, Job 1, 14 to 19, then 21, uh, 1, 22, and then 3, 1 to 3, 11, all broken up. A messenger arrived at Job's home with this news. Your oxen were plowing, 
the donkeys were feeding beside them. When the Sebans raided us, they stole all animals and killed all the farmhands. I am the only one who escaped to tell you. While he was still speaking, another messenger arrived with this news. Your sons and daughters were fasting in, your, in their oldest brother's home. Suddenly a powerful wind swept in from the wilderness and hit the house on all sides. The house collapsed and all your children were dead. I'm the only one who escaped to tell you. In all this, Job did not sin by blaming God. At least Job spoke and he cursed the day of his birth. He said, let the day of my birth be erased and the night I was conceived. Why wasn't I born dead? Why didn't I die as I came from the womb? That is the reading of Job 1, 14 to 19. And then we jump down to 1, uh, then verse 22, then 1, 3, 1, 2, 3, and then verse 11. Brother John? <laughs> we say, Russell, there's a lot of meat on that bone. <laughs> Amen. Can we put it back up? Uh, okay. As you know, Job, the central character in the book of Job, may have lived during the time of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He was perfect and upright. He feared God and eschewed uh, evil. He was a responsible husband and father and was richly blessed with material goods. He, he had good health and was uh, highly respected by others. In short, Job was the greatest of all men of the East. God's, alt, God's intimate friendship blessed his house. So Job, Job was a, you know what I mean? He was an upright man. Job was, you know what I mean? But Job's faith was strong. Job didn't allow things to uh, swerve him off his character and things. And, and he was looked at, you know what I mean? But see, that's a good thing. We should strive to, to be the best at whatever we, we are. Because God got plans for us. See, see, God got, see, see when God sees him in you, because he made us in his image. When he sees you, in, then he wants to use us. You know what I mean? We're here for a purpose. We ain't here to just take, 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 take. We're here to give, 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 give. And the more you give, the more you get. See, I learned too about having that closed hand. You, you holding on to that last five dollars and <laughs> when you let it go, you get $25. I learned that, what? I would have been gave that up. But no, sometimes we be holding on, close hand, nope. Open up, let it go. Don't worry about it. See, when you're with the Lord, he's going to take care of us. He's going to give us what we need. See, we always, we always look at what we want. But see, the world, the world, the world, see, see, we're in this world, but we're not of this world. But the world has a lot of things that we can be affected by. But we have to, have, like they say, keep your morals right. We keep our morals right. We're not going to fall into things. We go to work, people doing all kinds of stuff, cussing, doing this and that. But you don't get in it. We go, well, they don't do it. They be wondering why you could just... You don't want to come to, no. <laughs> no. And the thing is, when you take a stand, they respect you. Because they're trying to figure out how you doing it. And the thing is, I ain't doing it, he's doing it. <laughs> you know, they be, that's what the thing is. It ain't about me, it's about him. I learned that years ago. It's about him. Take a look at some friends. I talked earlier about friends. Eliphaz, he was the first and most prominent of Job's three friends. He had come from a great distance to comfort an ailing buddy. Scripture describes him as a distinguished thinker or sage of, of, of Teman in uh, Edom, which was known for its wisdom. 
where he comes from. You know? And that's just a good thing, that wisdom. Grandmama used to tell us, you don't get old being a fool now. You don't get old being a fool. Anyway, Bilidad, he was the second friend to, to visit Job. The, the, the Shuhite, one of the sons of Abraham and Keturah, is it Keturah? Uh, from Genesis 25, Job, all that. The Bible scholars believe that Bilidad's home was, was, in, was the Assyrian land of Shuha, uh, south of Har Haran, uh, near the middle Euphrates River. And then Elihu, he was Job's young friend who, who raised the discussion of Job's suffering to a higher theological level. He tried to show the hurting Job that greater wisdom comes from inspiration instead of human experience and tr traditions. Thank you. I don't know why I'm tongue tied today. <laughs> but anyway, there's friends, you know what I mean? We all think, think about Job's friends, but we got friends. You know, sometimes, you know, you got friends that mean well. If you sick, they come to visit you. But then some, sometimes they want to like, okay, now, why are you suffering? <laughs> yeah. you know, don't, you, we can't, you know what I mean? It's none of their business. You come to see me, come to see me. Amen. Encourage me. Don't try to figure out why I'm sick. <laughs> yeah. Because you don't know the whole story. You know what I mean? But you know what I mean? Friends mean well. And I don't want to turn you off with friends. But sometimes we have to, like, you know, take them with a grain of salt. Because you know why I say a grain of salt? Because salt cures stuff. <laughs> we got to cure. Sometimes we have to cure some things. You know what I mean? You know? <laughs> uh. But you know what I mean? A lot of times your friends mean well, but they ain't always well. So sometimes you got to, if you know this story, you know what I mean? They came to see their buddy. Their buddy was an upright man, and then all of a sudden he's down. They can't understand that. Well, you must have did something. Because you're upright. You're the, you're the man. You're the, the ultimate brother. Now you suffering. But not realizing it's God's plan. See, people don't understand that. People think, you know, they just getting in, the, in your business. It's about kingdom business. God's business, you know. But sometimes they don't understand it. That's why we have to stay strong. You can't rely on uh, your, fr your friends and all that to come and cheer you up. I mean, it's good, but you've got to be able to get yourself up. And how do you get yourself up? Herman can't, <laughs> Herman can't do it. It's the Lord. First of all, who put you here? So he didn't put you here just to be wasting you. <laughs> he put you here for a purpose. But sometimes we don't understand his purpose. And things. If we know this story, you know, we don't have no time to get into the whole story today. But you know, the adversary. I was listening to John, and he was explaining some things to to the superintendent. And I said, "Look at them, they, them scholars." They. But he broke it down. He's breaking the story down. But sometimes we don't all know the story. That's why we need to come together and share a little thing. Sometimes you see some things, but you you might miss a little thing, a little thing that will connect you. There's little connectors and things. So it's okay. It's good to come together. And don't act like you know it. I don't know it all. I'm a good, I like to listen. I learn how to listen because that's when I learn something. And, I, and the thing is, I don't have to tell you that I didn't know it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I learned that. Shut up and listen. You know what I mean? Don't act like you know it all. I don't know it all. I, I love to learn. I love to learn. <laughs> and like I told the superintendent, you're never too old to learn something new. You learn something new every week. I do. I do. Okay, let's see. Job's tragedies. Now you heard what John was reading, what was happening. One thing after another. One thing after another. He didn't have a chance to get through the first one. Here comes the second one. And it's funny. And I'm the only one that survived to tell you. It's funny how the messengers are. <laughs> you know, I was the only one. You should be glad. <laughs> anyway, 
Truly, Job was a godly man who left no stone unturned in his a devotion to God. Yet within a matter of seconds, he received the worst possible news from four messengers, one on the heel of the other. He was wiped out by natural calamity and the, 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 the vicious attacks of men. All these tragedies were, were the work of the accuser, Satan. Job had no idea that Satan was using him to challenge God, nor did uh, Job know that his suffering would be used by God to defeat Satan. Job, Job's life had become a, a combat zone where God and Satan battle for Job's allegiance. So if you know the story, this Satan was out there looking for something. God recommended Job. God said, have you considered my, my, my servant Job? Satan was talking junk. Oh, well, he's only, he's only good now because things are good. If things are bad, he ain't going to stay with you. But God, God knew Job. God knew Job. So don't be surprised if you get offered. It should be, you should be honored. You know what I mean? Sometimes we think we're supposed to just be on the mountaintop all the time. When you get down that sh the valley of the shadow of death and you go through it, that's, that's a victory. That's, that's a victory. But see, we, we, the world teaches you about the positives of things. They don't, they don't like to teach you about any negative. Well, they don't understand it. Uh, that's probably why, why they don't teach that. They don't understand negativity and, 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 and being down. But see, when you're down, you ain't got nowhere else to go but up. See, that's the way we look at it. You know, don't be afraid to be down. Because you know the Lord's going to bring you up. And a lot, and lot of times he'll bring you up even stronger. That's a good thing. Now, it, you won't go back down right away. You might go down again. He might say, hey, you did a good job. I need to use you again. I got a proof of point here. St. John's needs some. St. John's got some thick necks. I need you to show them the ropes. <laughs> like Mike used to say, some knuckleheads. <laughs> anyway, God was pleased to announce to Satan that Job was his unique and most faithful servant. Wow, can you imagine that? God looked at you like that. Shh. Satan countered God's boasting by charging that Job was faithful only because he enjoyed God's favor. In short, Satan told God that when his blessing ceased to flow in Job's direction, he, he, he will curse thee to thy face. For reasons uh, known only to him, God, God's, uh, God responded to Satan's challenge in a way that would ultimately test Job's resolve to be faithful in the absence of divine blessings. So, you know what I mean? Satan is thinking, oh, well, as long as things are good, oh, sure, he's, he's good. But no, God had faith in him to know that he was, his faith was not going to break. He was not going to. And that's what we got to be. We got to be serious. You know, we say we're faithful. But then something happened. Oh, Lord. We cry out all quick. <laughs> instead, of, instead of taking a moment and pray, say, Lord, uh, okay, what you, you're trying to show me something, Lord. I know, I know you're there, Lord. I know you're there. But we, we quick to holler. Oh, man. Sister Joe. Yeah, that's what I said. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And the thing is, God hasn't left us. He never left Job. Job lost all that, but God was still there. It was part of God's plan. Because the adversary's going to and fro, looking for somebody to mess with. God said, well, here, check Woody out. You know, consider my favorite servant Woody. You know, so sometimes God puts us in positions that we're down because he's going to bring us out of it. That's the thing is, he got faith. That's why we have to develop faith. 
God has faith in us. God knows us. <laughs> you know, he knows what we're going to do before we even ask. So, you know what I mean? He's, he, he knows and things. But yeah, this is powerful. It's powerful. This whole lesson just made me rethink things, you know. Because I've been down. I've been down now. <laughs> but I'm still standing. And only because of him. It ain't had nothing to do with me. <laughs> you know, I had to trust him. There's some days that, you know what I mean, I had some doubts. But this lesson shows us it's okay to have doubts. Doubts will make you communicate. See, that's the thing. God wants us to communicate with him. Whatever you got any doubts about. <laughs> That's right. Because when I came back, Woody, I seen you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, some some people you got. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The other thing is, the other thing is, you gotta pray for yourself. Don't let anybody come touching you. <laughs> Not that I'm saying don't let. Them. But sometimes you got to, well, the bottom, at the end of the day, you got to pray for yourself. Yeah. So silent. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And that's his plan. <laughs> he's there. The thing is, he's not, he never leaves you. When we're suffering, he hasn't left us. He's waiting for us to, because to, he knows we can do it. He knows what our strengths are. He knows you can get through it. Sometimes he's waiting for us to communicate with him so he can continue to encourage us. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. That's true. Right? That's why I told you about the devil. Don't stop giving devil credit. Devil ain't made you do nothing. Devil ain't. You know what I mean? We, I used to say that. Now I, I, no, 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 no. No, 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 no. Because he can only do what God allows him. Because he's a fallen saint. You know, he's under God's control, too. God just let him roam out there until he's, you know what I mean? That's why it's important. <laughs> That's why it's important when we see you cursing yourself. Oh, I'm not doing well. Or That's not the way it should be. When you start cursing like that, the devil picks up on that. He can't read your mind, but he can read your voice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because he's in here now. Wait to see who we can jump on. <laughs> but y'all done say, get out of here, not today. Not today, devil. <laughs> Amen. As soon as God released Job into Satan's power, Job was struck with a terrible series of tragedies. The writer uses four different scenes to, il to illustrate that over an unknown period of time, Job was deprived of every material blessing and nearly all family and friendship ties. Job was completely stripped of, of all God's favors. Eventually his health failed and he was left destitute. Satan had uh, Job where he wanted him, namely outside of God's apparent protection. So he thought, this was, this was Satan thought. He thought he had him. Cause you know what I mean? God let him lose everything. So Satan was thinking, oh, once he lose everything, uh, he ain't going to worship God no more. But Satan, you know what I mean? He's, our man is, <laughs> he was, you know what I mean? You don't change. If you were an upright, faithful man, 
You're going to be that through thick and thin. You know what I mean? You're going to be that through thick and thin. You're not going to just, when you lose things, now, now you lose your, no. If you're serious, you're not going to change during bad times. You know what I mean? Because you're going to expect it and, and, and know who to, who to go to. Where do you get your strength from? <laughs> the Lord. Hey, so why would you stop now? He had a good relationship with the Lord, so he, he knew where to turn. You know, man, he wasn't happy about losing everything, but then he kind of, sometimes God has to wake. Sometimes we get so good that God has sent something to wake us up. Wake us up. Never get just so comfortable, you know, because sometimes God has to wake us up. We should note, however, that Job's destitute, destitute position was due not to Satan's power, but to God's power. The writer wanted his readers to know that Satan could do nothing to Job without God's permission. Nothing. While, while Job may, may not have been immediately aware of God's active active and a continuing intervention, he was aware of God's availability. See, I like that. He, know, he knows. He might not understood what was exactly going on, but he knows God's availability. God will never leave you or forsake you. Suffering may bind us to, to excuse me, suffering may bind us to God's active intervention, but it needs not blind us to his uh, to his availability. So don't become blind. Like I said, God is always available to us, even even though we may not be able to see any evidence of his intervention. Faith enables us to see God. In, God is always keeping watch over his his own. So so you know what I mean? We are his own. He created us. Like I said, God didn't put us there to just have us suffering and and, and, and that's it, you know, or, or let people mess over us. No, God put us here for a reason. <laughs> and the thing is, God will not only help us, he will use us to help others. Just like he used others to help, help us and things. So, you know what I mean? We got to always be aware of, and the thing is, we don't always understand God's working. And you don't need to. Enjoy it. See, when you try to, see, that was Satan's problem. Satan tried to understand God and become equal. I'm going to play that now. He'll kick, <laughs> kick you right on out. <laughs> you know, he'll have you on your stomach. You'd be like the snake on, on your stomach the rest of your life. <laughs> you, know, you don't want that. But see, that's where it's seen. We have to watch it. You know what I mean? No, no. We don't need to know everything. Somebody of providence, somebody of wealth, somebody that outwardly spoke and knew about God. Revered by everybody within the city and town where he lived. We had last week somebody that, or two people that had God in them, that showed God's expression of love through um, him. So I said, sitting back just watching as they did what they needed to do. And my saying is, is and that is, God will work through anybody and everybody to get the results that he needs. And the needs, results he's getting is that your faith has not wavered. If your faith wavers, you're in trouble. <laughs> yeah. Because God will take his hand off of you. And if it wavers, the question is, if you really was faithful in the first place. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no. Yeah, yeah. It is. Like I said, these, these lessons are, you know what I mean? God has a plan to show, you know what I mean? He got everybody. Remember a few lessons back? Rahab, prostitute. But she had faith. Sometimes the world will label you, oh, you're a prostitute, you're a drug user. But you still have faith. Maybe you're just down. But see, he can bring you out of that. And then y'all got to let it go. Oh, I remember when she was busted. So what? You had some bad. 
you, you hid something. Everybody hid something. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, well, I was listening to Williams Brothers. Sweep around your own front door before you sweep around mine. <laughs> What's the other one? Take that, take that beam out your eye. <laughs> And stop, leave my little speck go. <laughs> you got a big old beam. <laughs> anyway, let's get back here. Job, <laughs> Job's nonverbal response to his tragedy. Okay, so Job, sometimes things happen so much, you know what I mean? Sometimes if you don't have nothing good to say, don't say nothing. Just, you know what I mean? Upon hearing the reports of his tragic losses, Job remained silent. The reader is informed of Job's silence by, by the reader's use of the poetic, poetic device. While he, i.e., the messenger of Job's bad news, was yet speaking, this phrase implies that Job's first response to, to the tragedies reported to him was one of complete silence. The sudden news about the succession, the, the successive Tragedies rendered uh, Job speechless. Uh, he says nothing. Job is deeply shaken. He is able to express himself only with the mourning gestures known in ancient Israel. He rent his, his mantle, uh, tore, tore his robe, and shaved his head and fell down upon the ground and things. So, you know what I mean? It, it, it's natural. It's, he's absorbed all this stuff. But then people are looking. Let's see what he says. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sometimes you don't know what when you don't know what to say. Don't say anything. I learned that years ago. Especially if you don't know, and you don't have nothing good to say, don't say anything. Because when you say things, people hold out against you. You spend the rest of your life trying to explain something that you did out of anger. You know what I mean? I, I'm guilty. I done flipped out. And stuff, and then you know, people will look. Or, or it's funny, especially now, don't let the deacons do anything. Oh my word. Deep? Was that you, Deep? <laughs> <laughs> Deacon's still a work in progress. <laughs> but you know what? We know how to go to the Lord. You know, and too, when we do stuff, the Lord, the Lord deal with us, He won't deal with us in front of you. He'll, he'll wait till I go home and try to go to sleep. And then I'll be tossing, then he'll be, I'll be like wrestling, wrestling, wrestling with him all night long. <laughs> but no, it's, it's, it's something. But people look, so I like this. He didn't, he didn't say anything. Because you know, people were, were waiting, you know, they're waiting. Even though, you know what I mean, some of them are your friends, but they're waiting to see what you got to say, why this is happening. He don't know why it's happening. You know, sometimes we don't know what's, why things are happening. We just go with it. We go with it. and we, we trust the Lord. Silence is a natural first response to tragedy, which affects us personally. We cannot uh, immediately put our feelings into words. We are shocked, stunned, and in some ways uh, traumatized. Words e elude us. We can only cry and groan inwardly. We may even express ourselves in, in, in prim, primordial screams that express or expresses our sense of helplessness in, in the face of circumstances which we wish were different, but no, we cannot change. Our emotions swing back and forth between anger and a, a denial. I mean, it, and that's a natural thing, but you don't have to express it. You know what I mean? You, you do better just kind of just praying. <laughs> Instead of worrying about what y'all thinking, I have to pray to the Lord. Lord, you know what I mean? And the, and the Lord will tell you, I got you. I got you. He'll tell you exactly what to do. Okay. Job's faithful response to his tragedies. Faith in God is a tremendous source of strength when one is facing tragic loss. Handling the personal stress occasioned by loss is one of, one of life's greatest challenges. It, is, it requires a strong and viable faith. 
William E. Uh, Hume has, help, has helpfully noted that Job went from the position of prominence in the community to becoming the butt of scoffers. It is instructive to note, uh, however, that in all this, Job sinned not, nor charged God foolishly. Because people were saying, remember the wife? Said, you need to curse God. He looked at her like, are you crazy? <laughs> no, but that's what people expect. Oh, you done lost everything. I know you're going to go off. No. Oh. This statement, which summarizes Job's faith, faith, a response to, to the tragedy, had, had befallen him, teaches at least two things about faith. The first is that faith is not dependent upon the, the constant flow of God's blessing. Second, uh, while faith may be tested, it is often uh, severely shaken. It is not necessarily destroyed by tragic loss. So we can be shaken, but that doesn't mean we're lost. That's what I like about this. Although the, the, the combination of Joe's loss did not destroy his faith. It did create his, him a religious problem best summarized in the question, what kind of God would allow these tragic things to, to happen to me when I have been so faithful to him? You know, you know, but that's what the world wants us to do. Why would you, your God, what kind of, you serve this God and he let this happen? But they don't understand God has taken them through. God is, God got him. He got him. They don't understand that. So they want us to curse God, but we know better. <laughs> we know better. Okay. <laughs> Job's faith bogs down in despair. The religious problem that Job faced brought him to the very edge of dis despair. His days of silence had ended. His days of questioning God's mysterious ways with those who trusted him had begun. <clears throat> Job began to entertain thoughts that caused him to have some doubt about God's fairness and justice. Job knew that he had done, had done everything he could to sub sustain an ever-growing and intimate relationship with God. What what could he not, what he could not understand, however, was why God has ceased bestowing his blessings. Uh, Job wanted de desperately to know why God had with, withdrawn his care and favor. He tended to do well. He tended to be well versed in faith's capacity to to believe. We have much homework uh, to do. However, if we are to embrace faith's a capacity to doubt or to at least question God's way uh, with us. So what he's saying here is it's, it's okay to have some doubts or question, but who do you, you talk to God. You don't talk to your friends about it. We do this with God. God's okay with us questioning him, but he ain't okay with us out there uh, blaspheming him. Oh, God, to me. No, no, no. So don't, when you read this, when I say, oh, he, but no, he kind of turned it around. His friends was trying to get him to really, you know, blame God and things, and he, he, he wouldn't do it. He questioned, well, I don't know why God all of a sudden, because, you, know, you know, everything's flowing, and all of a sudden it stops. But then, you know what I mean, it's got to say, okay, God, I know you've been good so far, and maybe it's time to stop. See, we get used to everything flowing. Sometimes it's, <laughs> you know. But see, your friends will get you in a position. But I like it with, with Job. He thought about some things, but he knew who to talk to it about. He talked to God. He didn't talk to his friends about it. They was making comments, oh, yeah, you must have sinned, Job. That's why God took away his favor. Job didn't sin. <laughs> God was using Job. <laughs> Doubt is not... I like this. Doubt is not faith's enemy, nor is it the opposite of faith. The opposite of faith is unbelief. Okay? 
That's what his friends, they were unbelievers. He was a believer. So that's the opposite. <laughs> there is no God with whom to discuss the tragedies of life. Faith that dares to, to, to doubt says, there is a God whose way I do not fully understand. Therefore, I will be honest about my doubts and pray that God will entertain my questions. And in, and in his own time, I like in his own time, reassure me of his care and guidance. Not because your friends came to talk to you. You got to wait on God. God, because it's, it's between you and God. See, they don't know what God's doing in your life. They don't know God was defeating Satan through Job. They just saw the outcome. Oh, man, oh, I don't know if I can do all that. You, well, if, if you ain't got a relationship with God, you won't. But if you got a relationship with, Job, with God, you can do more than Job. All right, let's close this thing down here. Joe's religious problem is common in all who are challenged to live with the terrible consequences of tragedy. Have you ever been in a tragic situation and asked God for help, only to feel that he was not helping at all? You waited and waited. You kept on petitioning God to intervene and change your, your circumstances, and things grew worse. Job is... Job is not hesitant about exercising the faith to, to engage with doubt. His first step towards dealing with his doubts involved being honest with himself, honest enough to admit the sense of anguish and despair over God's treatment. So sometimes, well, you know what I mean? It's okay. I, I'm, I'm upset. But just... Let it go there. <laughs> you know, don't take, don't keep it going because your friends are really having you getting out of the will of, of God. But it's okay to express because sometimes we don't understand. But see, if you spend time with God, he will show you in his time, not your time, his time. See, we always try to put God on the clock. We can't put, a, he put us on the clock. How are we going to flip it and put him on the clock? You can't. <laughs> you can't. Okay. <laughs> His first step towards dealing with his doubts involved being honest with himself, honest enough to admit his sense of anguish and despair over God's treatment of him. Job, Job, Job is to be commended for having the kind of faith that takes doubt seriously. He opened his mouth and cursed his day, not God, his day. In, in other words, Job's situation of loss coupled with his bewilderment about God's ways uh, resulted in his desire to die without having lived. And that's what he made the comment about. Maybe I shouldn't have even been here. He never blamed God. He just said, maybe I should have never, you know. But that's some frustrating moment. But he never turned it on God. He turned it on himself. He never turned. That's one key here. He never turned it on God. Job is not threatening suicide here. Rather, he is lamenting the day of his birth. He reasons that if he had not been born, he would not have experienced the tragedies that had brought him to the point of despair. Tragedy is part of living in a falling world. Okay? We're in a fallen world, y'all. Moreover, God has not promised people of faith, a life free of tragedy. He has promised, however, to be with us when tragedy occurs. In the face of tragedy, we, we, we may, like Job, rue the day of our birth. But let us pray that at the end of the day, our faith and our continued dialogue with God about our doubts will give us the spiritual resources necessary to live victoriously with the consequences of tragedy. So at the end of the day, you know, we're going to have some good days, some bad days. You know, some people might die in your life, and you know, just different things happening to us. But that's not the end of the world. 
God, that's part of God's plan. See, maybe if you realize that person is going on to be with the Lord. Because I was like, take, take me, Lord. I'm ready to go. <laughs> now, <laughs> you ain't ready yet. And things. But this, this, this lesson, I got to close here. This lesson, I don't know about you, but Job. Job is a dynamite lesson about, you know what I mean? Your, your thoughts. Your thoughts. But don't let people control your thoughts. You have to be like Job. You have to be a serious spiritual person. You have to have a, a relationship with the Lord. If you have a relationship with the Lord, you, you're going to have it on your, when you're on the mountaintop or when you're in the valley of the shadow of death. So that's how it is. That's, that's his range. And think, you know, it's nice. We come to church. We're happy. And then you go to work. And, oh, man. Oh, you know what's breaking loose. But you get through it. You come back next Sunday, you be rolling. Go right back out again. That's part of life, y'all. <laughs> So I got to close here. Uh, it's a good, good lesson. I'm, I'm over time here, so I guess I better just close it on out. <laughs> Most gracious Father, once again, we thank you, Lord. And Father, as we leave our Sunday school class and go into our, our morning message, we want to continue to pray for the shepherd of this church, his wife and family and mother-in-law. We also want to pray for the entire St. John's body. And once again, Lord, if there's anything displeasing throughout the St. John's body, I pray that you take it away right now. If there's any illnesses, Lord, we're going to trust in you. We're going to lay them down. And Father, we just want to continue to celebrate you and tell you that we love you because you first loved us. In your son Jesus' name, let us all say amen. amen.
Take your time, dear. Yeah. 
Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord again. You can do better than that. Come on, let us stand on our feet. God has been good to us. We just got done singing. The Lord has been good to us. He's been so good to me. Listen, listen, listen. The church needs to understand that God inhabits the praises of his people. Do you have something to praise God for this morning? Besides waking you up. Besides putting food on your table, did God heal your body? Did God make a way out of no way? Did God open doors for you that needed to be shut and then he shut doors that needed to be closed? Didn't God do something special for you? Just take a moment and think about how good he really is and make it personal. Amen? Amen. Eternal God, our Father, your majesty, the great I am, the lily of the valley, the bright and the morning star, the creator of all things, we bow before you this morning and we submit our hearts, our minds, and our soul to you, God. Lord, as we stand in your presence, we ask now, God, for forgiveness of our sins. Wash us, our minds. Give us peace as we enter into this worship, that we will be free to worship you in spirit and in truth. Lord, we ask that the fresh anointing will fall upon us this morning. Anoint this waiting congregation. Anoint this choir. Anoint every foot that steps over the threshold. And it remind us that we're here to do one thing and one thing only. And that is to worship you. So Lord, we thank you for the privilege. Now we surrender all to you. Have your way. In Jesus' name. Amen. Let the words. <clears throat> Be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. On earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who've trespassed against us. And lead us not into temptation, 
but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Right where you're at, why don't you just worship the Lord? Worship Him. Worship Him just because of who He is. He deserves our worship. He deserves our praise. Lord, we thank you. We praise you, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Spirit of the living God. Fall fresh on us. Spirit of the living God. Come and be with us. Spirit of the living God. Come into our hearts. Spirit of the living God. We move out of the way. Now God have your way. Have your way God. Hallelujah. You may be seated. You may be seated. At this time, we're going to turn the services in the hands of Minister Joanne Rao. Let us receive her by saying amen. Amen, amen again. Amen. One more time for the Holy Ghost. Amen. Excuse me, I got ahead of myself. We're in Abbott season. and First Lady, all of the clergy, officers, church family, members, and friends. Today we will start the first of five Advent services. Advent is a time to prepare for the coming of Christ. We ask you to take time this year to prepare yourself by sharing with family and friends what God's word in the Bible says about how salvation will come to the world. As we all know right now, the world is in turmoil. Yes. So we really, really need to humble ourselves and to pray and to worship this Advent service more so than ever before. An Advent wreath with evergreens is used to symbolize everlasting life in Christ. Around the wreath, we will light one candle per Sunday until three purple candles and one pink candle have been lit. On the last Sunday of Advent, we will light the white candle, which is in the center, and that is the Christ candle. Good morning, church. Good morning. Good morning. The scripture references are Psalms 25 and Jeremiah 33, 14. Please take the time to read the Psalms in its entirety. I will be reading Psalms 25, 1 through 5, 20, and 21. In you, Lord my God, I put my trust. I trust in you. Do not let me be put to shame, nor let my enemies triumph over me. Yes. No one who hopes in you will ever be put to shame, but shame will come on those who, who are treacherous without cause. Jesus. Show me your ways, Lord. Teach me your paths. Guide me in your truth and teach me, for you are God, my Savior. And my hope is in you all day long. 20 and 21. Guard my life and rescue me. Do not let me be put to shame, for I take refuge, I'm sorry, for I take refuge in you. May integrity and uprightness protect me, because my hope, Lord, 
is in you. Amen. Then, according to Jeremiah 33, 14, God said to his people, the days are surely coming when I will fulfill the promise yes. I made you. Amen. 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 At this time, we will light the first candle, which is the candle of hope. Good morning. Good morning. I'll be reading from 1 Thessalonians chapter 3, verses 9 through 13. For what thanks can we render to God again for you? For all the joy wherewith we joy for your sakes before our God. Night and day preparing exceedingly that we might see your face and might perfect that's which is lacking in your faith. Mm -hmm. Now God himself, our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ, direct our way unto you. Mm -hmm. And the Lord make you to increase and abound in love and one toward another, yes. and toward all men, even as we do towards you. To the end he may esta establish your hearts unblameable blameable in holiness before God even our Father at the coming of our God, our Lord Jesus Christ, with all his saints. Steadfast love and faithfulness are with us always when we, we follow God's commandments. Mm -hmm. The Savior God promised to us, as I loved you, you also should love one another. Amen. John 13, 34, you can read that at your own time. This is what we as disciples of Jesus Christ should try to do. Think of people or groups this week of people that you have difficulty loving unconditionally as Christ loved us. Amen. Write their name down on paper and keep it near you all week. Pray several times daily for those people whose names you wrote. Pray about your thoughts concerning that person or persons whose name you wrote down. Can we bow our heads and pray, please? Oh God of this waiting season, help us open our hearts and minds to those around us as we prepare ourselves for the celebration of the birth of your Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Thank you for your attention and reverence during this, the first of the Advent services for this year. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. He's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. 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 He's so worthy. He's so worthy. God is so good. Hallelujah. I thank God for allowing me to worship leader this morning. God is just so good. He's just so awesome, awesome, awesome. Let alone just, just if you just think about the fact that he woke you up this morning. Because yeah. believe me, yeah. somebody, yeah. Mm, mm, mm. somebody didn't wake up this morning. Yeah. Somebody yeah. didn't wake up this Sunday. So I'm grateful. I'm so grateful, grateful, grateful. I can't tell you all the goodness. I, I wouldn't have enough. I, he would make me pull, put them, put them in the sweater and sit me down. He'd pull everything, make me sad. If I sat here and told you all the things that I'm so grateful. What the God has done. Come on, come on. And I'm not talking about, I don't have to go back in the past. I'm just talking about the last few days. Yeah. How God has been blessing me. Yeah. Yeah. It's just, I just can't contain myself to tell you how good the Lord has been. But I'm going to try to stand here, Pastor, and do the job I'm called to do to the best of my ability today with the help of the Lord. Amen, amen, amen. Wow. At this time, we're going to have our children's altar call, and I'm going to ask that our children come around the altar at this time, Praise and that the, the parents, guardians come be with them, encourage them, those that don't maybe have a child, that they are, you might know a child of, stand in reference to them as we pray for our children today, because they need this prayer. And I'm going to ask Sister Isla if she would come and pray over our children this morning. Amen. 
Look what the Lord has done. Look what the Lord has done. Given us some children in this church. Hallelujah, hallelujah. God did it. God did it. Yes, he did it. He's good to us. So let's bow our heads. Father, I come this morning, Heavenly Father. First of all, Lord, thanking you, Lord, for this day. I'm grateful for the day that you've given us, oh, Heavenly Father. So, Lord, I've been called to pray for these, your children, oh, Heavenly Father, that has gathered around this altar this morning, Lord. Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus that you would take these children, Lord, that has been gathered here this morning, God, and wrap them, Lord, in the cradle of your love, oh, Heavenly Father. Father, I pray this morning that you would guide these little children, that you would lead these little children. Oh, God, let them grow up to be men and women of your way, oh, God, in the name of Jesus. Help them, Lord, not to get sidetracked along the way, oh, God. But help them, Lord, to keep their little minds staying on you, oh, God. Help them to remember the song, oh, Heavenly Father, that, yes, Jesus loves me. Because, Lord, we know that you love these little children, oh, Heavenly Father. And, oh, God, I ask this morning, oh, Heavenly Father, that you would continue, God, to lead them and to guide them, oh, Heavenly Father. Help these parents, Lord, oh, Heavenly Father, to teach them about you, oh, Heavenly Father, to rear them up, Lord, in the way that you would have them to be reared up, oh, Heavenly Father. Oh, God, not only these children here in St. John, Lord, but children, oh, God, in their homes all around the world, oh, God. Children on the streets all around the world, oh, God. Look on them this morning, God, because truly, truly, Lord, they need you, oh, Heavenly Father. And, Lord, help someone to teach them, oh, God, about you, oh, Heavenly Father. They won't know you if they're not taught, oh, God, in the name of Jesus. Help them today, God. And help the parents, Lord, to be the parents that you want them to be in their lives, oh, Heavenly Father. Oh, God, we thank you for these children, Lord. We thank you for them, God. And, Lord, as they take a break from school, oh, Heavenly Father, keep them, Lord, in your care, oh, Heavenly Father. And while they're in school, oh, God, they need you while they're there, God. So, God, I'm asking you to wrap them in your love and care for them, God, in the name of Jesus. These are your children, God. You created them and you know all about them. So, God, they belong to you. Take care of them, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. If we could stand now for our congregational hymn. Oh, how I love Jesus. Those you have the hymn books on page 129. Following in that, we'll have the reading of Holy Word by Mr. Paulette. And after that, our choir will give us a selection in that order, please.
Good morning. God's kindness, Psalm 36, 5 through 10, Lamentations 3, 22 through 25. Thy mercy, O Lord, is in the heavens, and thy faithfulness reaches unto the clouds. Thy righteousness is like the very mountains, thy judgments are great deep. O Lord, thy service me and enemies. How excellent is thy loving kindness, O God. Therefore the children of men put their trust under the shadow of thy wings. They shall be abundantly satisfied with the fatness of thy house, and thou shalt make them drink of the river of thy pleasure. For with thee is the fountain of life, and thy light shall we see light. O continue thy loving kindness unto them that know thee, and thy righteousness to the upright in heart. It is a Lord of mercy, and we are not consumed, because his compassion fails not. They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, saith my soul, therefore will I hope in him. All together. The Lord is good unto them that wait for him, to the soul that seeketh him. Amen.
She knows he's real. She you know my story. Like, I don't know y'all. But if you've been through something, mm, anything, you'll know that God is real. Wow. I don't ride around with my tag on the back of my car that says God's real for nothing. I ride around with it because I want the world to know because I know my own self. Sometimes, sometimes the enemy is so busy. One time when I came out, not out of my house, but I was down at the Salvation Army, and I went to get in my car, I just happened to look. Somebody had the nerve to put a note on the back of my tag that the devil's real too. Jesus. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> but when I thought about it, y'all, I said, that person's right. He is. Yes, he is. So don't get it twisted, y'all. The devil's real too. But you just gotta make up your mind and know in your heart who you're gonna serve and which is the real, real one. That's what you gotta do. That's what you gotta do. Ooh, hallelujah. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. At this time, I'm gonna ask. Once again, I'm trying to contain myself, y'all. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Jesus, Jesus. If Sister Karen will come with the announcement at this time, and then we'll have remarks from our pastor, and I will ask that the trustees will get themselves ready for offering. Amen. 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 I give an honor to the Spirit of the Lord, to our pastor, to the pulpit, to our first lady, to the officers, and to all of you. We say good morning. Good morning. Yes. yes. God is real. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Yes. We certainly hope that everyone had a wonderful holiday with yeah, Thanksgiving. We pray that you had blessings yeah. on that day. Yeah. Mike, we are certainly glad to see you yeah. back Amen. in our Amen. Amen. Sister Diane could not sing a better song to bring it back because God is real. You went through a lot and you're back in our fold. Please, Lord, continue to strengthen him. And Lord, remind him that he has a church family when he's down and he's not feeling right to please contact somebody immediately. We ask that you please be in prayer for all of our sick and shut in yeah. and all the bereaved families throughout our community. On behalf of our missionaries, they'd like to thank everyone for supporting their day of sharing and caring with the hats and gloves and scarves last Sunday. I think a lot of the children got two and three sets and that's what we, I'm sure that's what their goal was 
to make sure that they're warm for this winter. On behalf of our men of honor, special thanks to all that supported the Thanksgiving luncheon with your donations and everything you might have done. On behalf of the Reading Vicinity Ministerium Association, thanks to all who attended the Thanksgiving service last Sunday. Now, Sunday, December the 10th, immediately following morning service, we're going to be blessed and honored by our pastor and our first lady with a luncheon. We are asking you to please just sign up on the sign up sheet. And it's not to know who's coming, but it's to know how many to prepare for. Food costs too much. And we don't need to waste any food. There's too many families that need food. So please do that for our pastor and first lady. Sign up if you plan on attending so that they have an idea of what needs to be prepared. We thank you in advance. The bus trip to New York, if you have not uh, seen one of the brethren from the Men of Honor, please do so and see if there's a seat still available. Um, I'm sure they would like to get that taken care of this week. We ask that you, uh, the Higher Education Ministry asks that all the children please remember to bring your report cards by December the 10th. You can see either Sister Tamara or Sister uh, Lisa Blunt with your report cards. Now, December, Saturday, December the 2nd, from 9 to 11, the Reading Training Day for Chosen 300 will be over at Zion Baptist Church. Church, we are involved in this, so if you plan to be uh, involved, you need to be in attendance so we know what we need to do from St. John's. Uh, it's important to get the directions firsthand, not from someone else. That way, we all can say the same thing and do the same thing. So St. John's, I know our pastor has been wanting us to do this, and we agreed to do this, so you need to be in attendance if you plan to support the Chosen 300. Sister Idella George has invited anyone that would like to come out for a memorial repast at her, for her brother, Brother Alan Hopkins. I'm sure we all knew him. Uh, you are welcome to join her at the uh, Burke's Lodge, number 47, from 6 to 9 on this coming Friday. We ask that you please have a blessing, a prayerful week. Remember, God loves you, and so do I. Amen. 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 Thank you, Sister Flowers, for those announcements. Good morning, church. Good morning. Good morning. We thank God and praise God for you all being here today. We pray that you had a great Thanksgiving full of turkey and all the fixings that went with it. Uh, we thank God for every day. Every day is a Thanksgiving. Amen. 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 Uh, Amen. Men of honor, they continue every year to do a great job to feed our community. It is an outreach. It's a lead magnet for us to reach our community by feeding them and to have an opportunity to minister to the people that came uh, to be fed. I was there for a little while. It was an awesome time. Thank you, Men of Honor, for the work that you do. Uh, let's continue to support them. <clears throat> As Sister Flowers already had made an announcement on December the 2nd for the Chosen 300 uh, training. Listen, only two people have signed up so far. Uh, just asking that if the Lord placed this on your heart to do, we as a church voted on it. It was going to be here. Uh, there have been some changes of the venue. Uh, Zion's going to be the primary place where the feeding is going to be done, and we are practically going to be in the pulpit, I mean in the bullpen, in holding, and just in case they need to come to the south side. But listen, this is ministry. Uh, this is ministry not for chosen 300, but for those who are in need. Uh, the Bible says, Jesus said, when I was hungry, you fed me. When I was without clothes, you clothed me. When I was in prison, you visited me. When I was in a hospital, you came to see me. This is ministry. And the disciples asked the question, well, when did we do that to you? He said, when you did that to the least of my brethren. You've done it unto me. 
this is a way for the church to become uh, engaged in the ministry that God has left us here to do on earth, to meet people right where they're at, and to prepare our minds to have a word in our spirit that not only feed them with physical food, but be able to testify and share with them the good news of Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. So we have an outreach ministry here. We have a missionary ministry here. We, have, we are called the Missionary Baptist Church. Amen? Amen. And we are doing great work, but there's always more work to do. Yes. There's always more work to do. So we're asking for those who God touched your heart. Let's get some people over on the December 2nd to the training that we can in, be in partnership with the Chosen 300. They're not asking for no money. This is asking for your hands <laughs> and your love and your support. Amen? Amen. Also on that particular Saturday, for those who want to go, there is going to be a one-day session Amen. Uh, at Turner Memorial. Turner. Turner Memorial in Stilton where the moderator... Pastor Richard J. Hampton is the moderator. I do believe that is still going? Yes. Okay, for those who want to go, there is a one-day session on, on that day as well. <clears throat> Excuse me. We would like to just show our appreciation, First Lady and I, just to give you a little bit of food to eat. <laughs> we do this every year, so we're asking as... Karen has asked, we're asking as well, please sign up. We're not going to turn anyone away, but it makes it a lot easier for us to purchase and prepare food on that day. Yeah. All are welcome. Now, don't bring your 20 chillings. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, the church family, we appreciate you, and this is a way for us to give you our gift in the way of food on that particular day. So we're going to have it at the social hall right after uh, worship service on that day. Listen, on last Sunday was the RVMA annual Thanksgiving Day service. Nobody showed up. I know there was a lot going on, but what I'm asking you to do is be mindful of the things that go on in our community. And let's support one another Amen. in what's going on. That's all I'm asking, uh, that we will be a part of all that's going on in the community. And that if you can't come, just give an account. Just give an account. With that being said, our candlelight service, the RVM and candlelight service will be held on December 20th at 7 p.m. at Zion Baptist Church. It, was, it will be good to see your face in the place. Amen? Amen. Amen? Amen. It's very discouraging for a pastor to open up his doors and nobody shows. Just saying. Well, we're going to preach anyway. Why don't we preach us? <laughs> but really, let's support one another. We got to do better. We really got to do better. And uh, we pray that God will bless that service. Amen. Listen, just for a moment, I want you to listen to me, but I want you to listen to the instructions first. Uh, I need you to celebrate with me and congratulate as I announce something to you today. But I want you to hold your applause. And all your hooty hoos, Chuck, hold them. <laughs> Deacons, hold them. But it is my honor today to ask you to stand with me. Please now, stand with me. Be so kind. But I want to present to the church today, Mr. and Mrs. Williamston, Steve and Pamela. Praise the Lord. They tied the knot on Friday. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Let me just say this while we're celebrating their marriage. 
these two people here really wanted to do right by God. Yes. 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 Whenever you do right by God, there's always going to be obstacles. Yes. yes. There's always going to be detractors. Yes. But I want to commend them publicly for holding and for standing and waiting on what God wanted them to do. Yes, yes, yes. And I shared with them, and I'll say it again, God has great things for you. Yes. Because of your obedience to him and not to man. So we thank God. Let's celebrate them again. Now, they don't know. You may be seated. You may be seated. I know you want to prance around the sanctuary. I know you want to do that, but some other time. Listen, they don't know I'm doing this. This is something that the Lord placed in my heart. We clapped. We yelled. Who do you? I didn't hear you. I'm going to ask the trustees to take up an offering for them today. So let's show our love in an offering that we can bless them as they embark on this journey that they may need to pay me to counsel them. But I'm only kidding. <laughs> so at this time, it's offering time. Just before they come, every year we help three families at the minimum that are in need. I'm not going to ask you to do it today, but on next week, I will have Sister Karen Flowers announce this again. Last year, we had five families that we not only prepared a meal for or gave them food to prepare a meal for, but to make sure that their children were taken care of. These are the type of things that brings joy to people's hearts, but God honors. And this time of the year is very hard for a lot of people. And just a little love needs to be spread and saying, John, you're good at that. At the minimum, three families. So next week, we'll be asking for a little more of your to help someone that is in need. Amen. And if you know someone, please see Sister Flowers or Sister White and give them their names that we will have the names of the families. Listen, it may be even a family member of yours that needs something and you know it. Don't be ashamed. We sit here, we look good, don't we? We're okay, but there's family members in our families that aren't okay. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. Don't be ashamed. This is what the church does. does. Years ago, I remember seeing folks, I mean, uh, station wagons in the community knocking on doors, dropping stuff off. Amen. Cookies are being made. The nuts in the, in the bowl, you remember that? The crackers, and I ain't gonna tell you what kind of toes they call them. <laughs> Oranges and stuff like that, that. We don't have that anymore. But let's bless someone that they may find joy in this season of joy that we are celebrating in. And also, at the, after the holidays are over, just one more announcement. I would like to get with the joint board. We want to meet with the joint board. There's a business decision that I need your input on before we present it to the church. It's a good business decision. And I'm believing God for it. But as always, we don't want to exclude anyone with the information. So we start with our joint board and then we bring it back to the congregation. And if it's God's will for us to go on this business adventure, he will make it plain. Amen? Amen? Meanwhile, what I'm asking for you to do is to pray. Yes. Do we have any praying saints in the house? Yes. Here's what the prayer is, that God's will will be done. Amen? Amen. Amen. May God bless you. Now it's offering time.
Good morning, church. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Let's have to get things set up right. Uh, it's offering time. Uh, basket, myself and Rose will be holding. We'll be tithes and offerings. Sister Nikki Glimp will be holding the basket for pastor's aid. And Sister Brenda will be holding the basket for our newlyweds, Pam and uh, Steve. <laughs> May we all stand and follow the directions of the ushers. opportunity to give what you already gave us. These tithes and these offering, God, is for the upbuilding of your kingdom. We pray, God, that you will increase it, that we might be able to continue to do work down here on the south side of Reading. We thank you for the privilege to give. You said it's more blessed to give, and when you give, it shall be given back to you. So, Father, we thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. All things come of thee, O Lord, and of thy own have we given thee. All things come of thee, O Lord. First Lady, Minister Renee Jones. Amen. 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 
Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. At this time, we'll have recognition of our visitors. Thank you, God. That will person will come. And um, thank you, God. Just give me a minute, y'all. <laughs> and after that, our choir will come in and give us our hymn of preparation. Wow, thank you, God. And then as Pastor stated, the next voice of the uh, you will hear of, of our first lady. Yes. Amen. 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 I know that she's going to have a mighty word yes. for us today. Yes. And the reason I know that uh -huh. is because I know a man named Jesus. Yes. And I know that she knows the man named Jesus too. So I'm going to encourage you as you sit, listen, get your mind ready for the word to receive. And it's not about our first lady giving the word, but it's about what the word the Lord has given her for us. And that's what you stay focused on. Receive a blessing from the word because always, always, there's not a time that I know that when I read the word, I'm not blessed. Uh -huh. And that when I hear it, I'm not blessed. Mm -hmm. So, Amen. in my old days, in my humorous time, my humorous time, I would say, you don't be blessed. I'll take your blessing. Yeah. <laughs> but I realize now that what's for me is for me, That's and what's for you is for you. Amen. So, Amen. be encouraged. Be encouraged. Amen. 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 All praise to God, honest the pulpit, members and friends. Good morning. Good morning. I'm here to welcome our visitors. If there are any visitors, would you please stand now? Well, I welcome everyone here today and please enjoy the service. <laughs> a change in this life of mine since the Lord laid his hands on me there's been a change in this life of mine since the Lord laid his hands on me I don't walk like I used to walk
Yeah. He laid his hand. Hallelujah. Bless your name, God. Thank you, Jesus. Bless your name, God, for who you are in our life. Thank you, Jesus. Bless your name, God. You are worthy. You laid your hands on me. Hallelujah. Bless your name, God. Bless your name. Hallelujah. Oh, God, I give you glory and honor today. I thank you, God, for who you are. I thank you, God, for your grace, your mercy, and your tender love. I thank you, God, and I bless your name today. Now, God, I ask you right now in Jesus' name that you would have your way today, God. For I'm your daughter, God, the word that's in me, God. I'm asking you, God, as I hide myself behind the cross. God, that you would bring the word out in power and might. Oh, God, that someone will be healed and strengthened today, right now in the name of Jesus. I thank you, and I praise you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. I want to give glory and honor today to God for who he is, the head of my life. I want to thank God today. I want to thank God for our pastor, who is the love of my life, for allowing me to stand behind this sacred pulpit today. I thank God today. Oh, God, I thank you. Oh, God. Oh, God, I thank you. I thank God for you, the people of God today, and the ministers today. God has a word today. We're going to be coming from Psalms 46, just one verse 10. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the, he the heathen. I will be exalted in the earth. You may be seated. Amen. When we talk about, when you read this, read this chapter when you get home. Because in verse 1, it talks about the chief musician. For the sons of Korah, a song among Alamoth, God is our refuge and our strength, a very present help in a time of trouble. But when you talk about that name Korah, we should know Korah. What comes to my mind is in number 16. He was descended of Levi, the son of Jacob. It also talks about the earth opening up and swallowed up him and his family. It was a judgment from God because he went against Moses. Even though Korah met a bad end, the Bible tells us that his descendants went to serve as gatekeepers at the tabernacle of the Lord. Eleven Psalms are noted has been written by the sons of Korah for the choir director. The evidence of their faithfulness to God they were Levites from the Korath family. No ordinary musician can sing this psalms. No ordinary musician can sing this psalms. Just in the beginning of that first verse, God is letting you know where you come from does not dictate who you are.
In his Psalms, we find that God's people are safe and secure in him. We can find security and peace knowing that God watches over his people. God is available and dependable, trustworthy. The bigger things in our life we face, the less we can deal with them. We have to realize that God is greater. We have to stop fighting in our strength, allow God to take his rightful place as savior and deliverer in our life. But we have to trust God and not ourselves. Our human strength cannot match God's, and it is futile to fight when we would rather leave all in God's hands. No matter what trouble comes in our life, our human strength cannot compare to God's. Strength and sovereignty. Sometimes in a stillness, we get complacent in our life. We don't want to do work. We think that God should do everything in our life. As adults, we are no longer children. Hold on. When the Bible speaks about we are no longer children, I was a child, I spoke as a child. When we're an adult, we're no longer children. We don't speak as children anymore. So when it's time to work, we need to work. What does that look like? Whatever God tells you to do. What does that mean? Whatever God tells you to do. So when we stand still, we must realize it's in God's timing. It's in what God wants. And no matter what we go through in this life, this scripture, this Bible, this Psalms is telling you that God got you. God got you in the bad times when you your dark secrets. God got you. Sometimes you feel like the storms is so bad, but God got you. Be still and know that I am God. Be still. Be still in the chaos. Be still. Don't move. What that means is your spirit is still. No matter what's going on around you, it's still chaos all around you. But you know that God is working it out. You know that God has your back. You know that God is greater in you than he that is out there. In this life, we go through struggles, but God got us. When we talk about that, there's a man that comes to mind. <clears throat> but before that, we need to show the young people what it means to be still before God. As we are, young people in your life, we have some young people here today. Young people, in your life, sometimes you don't see us being still when there's trouble. But God wants you to know that you, in your troubles, he has you. Sometimes it feels like it doesn't matter. But God got you. But in the midst of that, God wants you to be still. Because some things that happen in your life, it's not by your choice. But God got you. That's what we are supposed to do as adults, to let our children know that God got us. Sometimes in our life we're not still. What does that mean to be still? Know that God got us. Be still. Don't move. Don't go this way. Don't go that way. You got bills that got to be paid. I've been there. It just says your right hand don't know what your left hand is doing and all that stuff, and you go do this and that. But we got to be still, people of God, no matter what it is, no matter what struggles in your life. We got to be still. When you see the Psalms, when you talk about Korah, Korah was disobedient. God did not pick him, God picked Aaron. You have to look at the chapter and understand. I'm ad living here. He wanted to be something that God did not call him to be, but God called him to be a part of. God called pastor to be pastor. We're here to help him. I ain't pastor. I don't want to be pastor. Pastor, I don't want to be pastor. I don't want to be pastor. <laughs> I'm here to help him. So because our descendants made the wrong choice doesn't mean that we have to. Did you understand what God said? 
because of their faithfulness. Their faithfulness, the evidence of the faithfulness to God. They were able to write psalms. And the psalms could not be sung by just anybody. The musician. Mm. Your calling is just not ordinary. It's extraordinary. Young people, your calling is not ordinary. It's extraordinary. But in the midst of it, you got to see us stand. You got to see us stand. We have to stand, people of God. But we all make wrong choices. David did. God bless David. But David started counting what he had, his troops. God gave David that mighty army. But the spirit of pride rose up in him. We have that sometimes. Pride rise up in me. And I want to do my own thing. <laughs> sometimes I want to fight. David wanted to fight. But what separates us from ordinary to extraordinary is we humble ourselves and say, God, please forgive me. I've sinned and I've fallen short. But sometimes we think what we're doing is right. God has to have counsel, there's safety and counsel. When you read in 2 Samuel chapter 24, you would understand when David counted the army, that was pride. He was saying, look what I got. He wasn't still before God at that particular time. The anger of the Lord, oh my goodness, he was angry. David was still a man after God's own heart because he humbled himself. And he said, God, it was me. It was me. I did this. I'm sorry. But in the midst of that, there was judgment. And the judgment just did not fall on David. It fell on everybody. When David started counting, let me see, what, when David started counting, that was foolish. And then also, God had counsel and David still didn't listen. David's choice fell on everybody. In verse 15, it says, the Lord sent a pestilence upon Israel from the morning e evening to the time appointed. And there died of the people of Dan, even to Bathsheba, 70,000 men. Our choices does not just fall on us. It falls on the people around you. It falls on your children. It falls on your coworkers. It falls on your husband. It falls on whoever's connected to you. When pastor does not do God's will, it falls on us. But what makes him extraordinary? He goes to God and says, please forgive me. I have sinned. And then he comes to whoever he did wrong to and said, I'm sorry. 
That's what makes us extraordinary. Because we know we sinned and we've fallen short of the glory of God. One thing you must remember that what you do, as I said before, just does not fall on you. You have to get that. When God say, be still in the midst of the storm, God saying he got you. When the boat was rocking and disciples said, Jesus, wake up. In the midst of that storm, he was calm. He was sleeping. But he knew that God had him. But the disciples didn't. Where was their faith? Ye of little faith. And Jesus spoke. Peace. Be still. So in the midst of your storm, you're rocking. You don't know your way out. You made some wrong choices. God is saying peace. Be still. In the chaos, peace. Be still. In your mind, Peace, be still. I got you. I'm strong enough. I can hold you. I am the God of I am. I am Alpha and the Omega. I am the beginning. I am the end. I got you. In this time, in this season, we go through storms in our life that are deep. No one knows about the secret thing. But God does. God wants to let us know he got us. 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 Peace be still. God's letting us know in his psalms, no matter what comes up, no matter what you see, no matter what you hear, no matter what you smell, I got you. I got you. I got you. You have to know that for yourself. God is saying, I got you. In the time of trouble, I got you. You may not have money. I got you. You may can't get gifts. I got you. Even when you can't see it, God has your back. Even when you think God don't understand, he does. He does. Even when you look at people and you say, God, look at me. But God's going to uncover. It is not what it seems. Because the devil comes as an angel of light. And he tries to steal the joy that God has for you. When God says be still, he means be still. He doesn't mean don't work. He doesn't mean don't take care of your family. He doesn't mean don't take care of yourself. Because see, some people take care literally still. I ain't doing nothing. I ain't going nowhere. God got it. No, we got to do something. What do we got to do? Read the word. Trust God in it. Peace be still. God wants to do, God wants to do no matter, God wants to do what he wants to do. But we have to let him do it. We cannot give up. The Bible says, enter ye in at the straight gate, for wide is the gate and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many there be which go in there yet. Because straight is the gate and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. The angel of light wants us to think that they got it going on out there. God didn't say there wasn't going to be no struggles. Jesus had struggles. Jesus had struggles. Let me tell y'all, let me tell y'all, Jesus had struggles. Jesus had struggles. 
when he got beat for us all night long. He had struggles. When he had to go into the garden of Gethsemane and pray, not my will, but thy will be done. He had struggles. He was fighting the flesh. Our flesh cannot be stronger than our spirit. Our spirit must be stronger. We must stand still and know that it's God. God will take care of us. But the only way we can do that if our spirit is stronger than our flesh. The Bible also tells about we weep what we sow and so shall we weep. God is telling us. Through his word. I got you. I got you. I don't know who's going through what. I don't understand. But God says, peace be still. I got you. Do what I tell you to do. Read my word. Seek my face. Humble yourself. I got you. Peace be still. Amen. Peace be still. Let us stand. Peace be still. What does it mean to be still? To be quiet. To stand. To hold off. To wait, be still, that those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. If you hold your peace, he will fight your battle. If you trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding, he will direct your path. Peace, be still. There may be someone among us today that is in the congregation or maybe you're online. And as the preacher says, the Lord does have you. He had you on his heart before you even was formed in your mother's womb. He had you on his mind when he sent his son Jesus to die on the cross for you. And just maybe there is someone in the congregation or in line that doesn't know Jesus. And he has you at a place now where you are still and he's spoken to your heart through the Holy Spirit. And now he's drawing you to the cross where Jesus died. Romans 10 and 9 says, if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. This is your moment. This is your time. For whoever you are, today is the day of your salvation. That God has you right where he needs you to be. And he's asking now. If you heard my voice, don't harden your heart. Why don't you come now and give life back into your body, into your mind, and into your spirit? All have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God, and the wages of sin is death. But this gift that I offer you is the gift of life, that Jesus laid it down, that you can pick it up today if you so choose to. Why don't you come now? And give the Lord your heart. He's calling. He's been calling. 
and you've been hearing, but you have not been moving. Why don't you move today and say, it's me, Lord. I need you. I need you more than life itself. I need you to give me the strength and the courage to live the abundant life that Jesus Christ died for. Is there one that don't know Jesus? We open up the doors of the church to you. But the kingdom of God is waiting on you. That he can write, the Holy Spirit can write your name on the Lamb's book of life. And that you may not have peace here on earth, but one day you will have peace. But if you're in Jesus Christ, he said, peace I give unto you, not as the world given to you, but I will give you peace. That's what passes your own understanding. Is there one that don't know Jesus? Why don't you come now and give him your heart? If there's one that's in a backsliding state, you know Jesus but you feel like he's so far away. You have drawn yourself from him, and you want to rededicate your life. Now is the time to come and rededicate your life. Right where you're at, you don't have to do it in front of the altar, but I encourage you to step out on faith and give your heart back to him. And he will give you peace to be still and wait on him to do the work that needs to be done in your life. There is none. The altar is open for prayer, for those who desire prayer. Yes, the newlyweds, come on up here. You need all the prayer you're going to get. <laughs> so happy for the newlyweds. Sister Fletcher, come to the altar, please. Good to see you, Karen. I mean, Michelle. Good to see you, honey boy. Almighty God, our Father, here we are again, Lord, standing at your altar. We come here now, God, because there are needs. There are needs that have to be met. There's no one else that can meet our need. So we stand before you this morning. Father, I pray that you would search every heart and every mind. You already know what their needs are because these are the people that you created. God, you know our thoughts are far off. And our ways are not always your ways. And our thoughts are not always your thoughts. So before we ask anything, God, we ask for forgiveness for all of our sins. And we turn from our sins and we turn to you in the name of Jesus. Lord, I pray for relationships, reconciliation, God. Pray for brokenness in the heart, in families. I pray for healing, 
physically, mentally, and spiritually. I pray, God, now that you would touch our hearts. And we can be still enough to hear your voice. Speak to us, God. In the quietness of this moment. Search our hearts. Clear our minds. When it's quiet, we can hear you. When the music stops, when the singing is over, we can hear you for ourselves. Speak, God, while we're still. Move, Holy Spirit. There's great needs at this altar. I feel it. Struggles. with children, struggles with addictions, struggles in marriages, struggles in the mind. Loneliness, fear, anxieties, identity struggles. But you're the creator of all things, and there's nothing too hard for you, God. So we cast our cares upon you this morning. We throw them at your feet because we know that you care for us. Praying God for the sick. Minister Westbrook. Dennis Jones. Tanya Kama, there's many of them, Junior Copeland, praying for strength for the caretaker. Praying, God, that we, the people of God, will make ourselves available to help those who are struggling with the caretaking. Make ourselves available, Lord, to check on one another. Help us, God, to 
be the light and the salt of the earth. Your word declares it. And let us be about it. As we go into this Christmas season, the giving, no one can outgive you. Let us be mindful, God, of the gift of salvation that you have freely given to us all. Let us give out the abundance of our hearts the love that's so desperately needed in this dying world. Lord, we thank you for what you've done in our lives and what you're doing in our lives and what you're going to do in the future. For these here, your people, they're free. They're delivered. They're set free. Now claim it in the name of Jesus. And Lord, we thank you for it. Amen. Amen. We're still in service. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine down upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. May God bless you and may heaven continue to smile down upon you is my constant prayer. We have entered to worship. Now let us depart to serve. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 You are dismissed.